Hello everyone, this is Samir from AI Pro Public, and I'm here to talk about Data Spell. So it's an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, made by JetBrains, that is specifically for EDA as well as prototyping machine learning models. So JetBrains wanted to create an IDE specifically for data scientists, and this seems to fulfill that category. In case uh, you are wondering which IDE is best suited for you, then if you are involved in both development as well as data science, then the PyCharm Professional Edition is best for you. Whereas if you are more of a data scientist, then uh, the data spell is a better option. So let's have a quick overview and look at all the features to get the feel of the workflow. Now let's get a brief overview of all the different functionalities and uh, tools that we will be getting with data spell. Okay, so now you can download the data spell on your Mac, Windows or your Linux from here. And uh, now let's look at different things that will be provided in data spell. So it is it mostly focuses on data science. So it's Jupyter notebooks are highly interactive and tuned so that you can play around with the outputs as well as the cells inside the notebooks. Also, the apart from that, from uh, they have picked up the smart coding assistance from the previous IDEs and integrated here. So you get a lightweight IDE with developer tools also for data scientists. Also, they have emphasized on the local and remote notebook feature. You can either you know start a, a local notebook here inside the IDE or you can connect to a remote notebook, either a Jupyter Hub, a Jupyter Lab or any other remote notebook. Also, they have created a scientific Python console and just like a notebook, you can use it like a notebook. Okay, now for data and visualization outputs, they have you know included all the popular scientific libraries like Plotty, Bokeh, Altair, IP widgets, and others. Okay, so now let's move on to built-in tools and integrations. So for the built-in tool, there is a lot of uh, you know emphasis on Git. Basically, you can clone Git projects, commit and post changes, work with several branches. So basically, everything related to Git. They have added into the IDE, so you don't really need to log into it separately. You can push your changes from inside the IDE. So also the terminal. So there is a built-in terminal for a lot of commands. Just like your operating system, you can make or change directories and you can access anything like your normal command prompt. For database tools, they also rely on smart coding assistance when editing SQL code. So there won't be any problem when uh, running or connecting to your database or altering any kind of schema. Okay, now let's move on to a few of the blogs they have written about data spell. So this was written when data spell was in the early access preview. And they have talked about all the features here that they were going to add. So the main focus was on the notebooks, notebooks itself. So they also worked on the possible ways to improve the notebook experience, basically experience for data scientists. So these are all the points they made. For tables, they added dedicated actions to open data in separate editor tabs. And they improved the scrolling of notebooks and notebook outputs. Apart from that, they are also talking about remote notebook support and uh, okay, interactive Python console. So now they have also answered a few of these questions how is uh, data spell better than other tools okay so previously there wasn't any ide for you know particularly for data science in the python ecosystem but here they have provided that uh, with the help of data spell and it brings a lot of data science data science tools such as a lot of uh, you know features in notebooks in interactive repl data set and visualization explorer quantum support and so on and they also integrated the you know IntelliJ you know, code assistance and uh, for Python and other tools, and they have integ integrated together to make this IDE. So eventually all the functionalities of data spell will be added into PyCharm. After that, let's go on to this. How is JetBrains data spell different from PyCharm? So mainly they are talking about how it's lightweight and it's designed for data scientists with data exploration workflows in mind. Hmm. If you work with a lot of ML models or you do a lot of EDA, then obviously this is a better option. Just like other you know IntelliJ based IDEs, this will also be a paid product. And they're also talking about different features here. Okay, so now let's go move on to, to the official documentation. So here 
let's get started so this will be the welcome screen here we have the setting of our environment so initially we set up the environment we go here so you can either choose the existing on environment or you can you know go to the newer one and choose that or you can connect to a virtual environment in ui themes with the help of this shortcut you can basically go to any uh, of your uh, settings so here we have four options in themes you can either choose from the intelligent light mac os dracula or high contrast themes all right so viewing modes based upon how you like to code and how you like to experience coding you can work in four modes here full screen distraction free zen mode and presentation mode you can explore them and apart, apart from that you can also choose the background image for your id so you can go to your settings and basically here in our appearance and behavior tab you can choose any of these uh, any of the background images we like and we can also change the background image depending on what size and what you know shape and everything you want to choose okay so there is also touch bar support for apple macbook pro models and there is also li uh, linux native menu currently it's in it's an experimental feature next is our accessibility features so anyone that has some kind of issue or some kind of impairment can use these features to access all the digital content here they have given a lot of options you can change the font size colors behavior of certain ui elements and you can turn on screen readers so they have given a link of a few of the recommended screen readers here also uh, they uh, have given the steps to install that you just need to go to this particular directory on your system and add this file and launch data spell and under the settings preferences tab you will get this option all right you can customize the ide based upon if you have you know if someone has some kind of vision deficiency or anything like that you can change the appearance okay so you can override you can resize tool windows adjust text size all right so they have given a lot of options here so you have a lot of uh, shortcuts here which you can look at by going at the key map so you can either use the default key map or you can manually change it depending upon your preference okay working offline if you prefer to work offline that is also an option but a few of the features are not uh, or do not work offline such as you know frequent updates of patches you might have to go online for the newer patches or plugins or you know for license activation also code inspections version control task and issue trackers okay and a few of the dependencies might not work properly if you're working offline right okay so setting up our environment so we can configure all these environments and basically our pipen or our virtual environment so they have given all the steps here all right so here the jupyter notebook support let's go to this look at this click start a jupyter notebook and data spell working space we configure our environment get familiar with the ui okay so they are telling about the each and every cell this is the cell toolbar this is our editor gutter here okay the code cell it can it contains the code output the output which is obviously interactive all right so we also have a toolbar in our cells also so toolbars on our cell and we also have a main menu toolbar there are i think two or three different toolbars in here we can edit our jupyter notebooks hmm. create a notebook file select jupyter notebook okay add cells what do you think okay for python so they have shown all this so you can make or either a jupyter notebook file a python file you can make a new directory a scratch file for a scratch file is a file you just need uh, if you want to make some a few of notes or something like that all right also there is r plugin support hmm. there is a lot of support for r also so they for now they fo are focusing only on r and python but eventually when these both of these are polished enough they will move on to other uh, languages also okay so they are also focusing on a lot of big data tools here right so you can uh, basically connect to all these tools and applications here hmm. with the help of plugins you can connect okay you can monitor all this to spark kafka work with data files 
okay so database tools and sql hmm. getting started with database database tools vcs operations pop up invoke any vcs related commands yeah so basically all the git commands are given here in vcs we can push you know work with different branches or you know commit revert or do any kind of git operations with the help of version control they have given a lot of git functionality you can set up a repository sync up files on all this so they have made an ide that is self-sustained we do not need to go to different uh, ides or you know connect with git everything is inside here you don't really need to go anywhere else okay so next is setting up our environment so when we when you first boot up data spell it will require the following steps first is the configuration of the environment for default workspace so if you don't have anaconda you can download it from their official website and configure a conda based environment whereas if you already have a conda environment it will be automatically suggested and if you don't have conda on a machine data spell will provide a download link the second point is we can attach local folders to the workspace now i will show you that when we first launch our data spell you need to add your data file so in my case i already have it open but in case i want to add a new directory i can attach a new directory and work here or i can even detach one i can add new folders python files and everything here even a scratch file i will discuss that later next i will talk about how can we connect to a remote jupyter server so there are two options here we can either connect to a local jupyter server or a remote jupyter server so if you want to connect to a remote one we can just press this button here and we will get these options so if i want to connect to a remote jupyter server i just need a url and the url will also require a token so for example i have a jupyter lab set up here if i want i can get that entire url which is this and if i add this then my system uh, basically my server will change and it will connect to this new server with this port 8890 currently my localhost port is 4 times 8 but that will change all right so next let's talk about our local so if you prefer with if you prefer to work with Jupyter notebooks locally, you don't have to connect to a remote Jupyter notebook. Just attach a local folder with your notebooks and we can open a notebook and run cells. The ID will take care of the, uh, the server locally. Next is editing Jupyter notebook files. So once you have successfully attached your file to the workspace or get connected to the remote Jupyter server, you can work with your Jupyter notebooks, Python scripts and files. So most popular commands for editing cells are available in the cell group in the main menu. You can also right click. So in the main menu, which is here, all the important commands are given here for running kernel environment, everything. Or we can also right click, which opens up the context menu and we get all these important commands. Okay. So next is next point i would like to cover is running notebooks you can execute the code of a notebook cells in many ways so first of all we can execute the code from this uh, small toolbar here or we can go to the main menu we can run from here right so if i want to run everything all these i can just with the click of a button i can run this now all this is working okay so now let's talk about how we can process the execution output so when any data frame is built, for example, this data frame right here, you can preview them in tabular format. To open any data frame in the editor tab, you can either right click on it and open it in a new tab or we can open the new tab from here. Now on this, you can either copy the selected fragment or cells of the table and save them in the CSV format, which I will show in a second. So we can save the title in the CSV format right here or we can also sort data in any column by clicking on the header so if i click on a header here i can sort it by fake or real all right 
just right, right click any table header to get the context menu and select the target command you can also right click on it so if your notebook cell involves any code that has plots or charts or any kind of graphs we can save them as an image we only need to right click on the image and we can save them in the png format for example i will show you so this scatter plot here in my data visualization project so i can save it as a png file on my desktop okay now let's talk about python scripts so with data spell you can obviously write and execute python code the simplest way to do is that run the, we can run the file in the run tool window however we can also execute it in the interactive repl python console the python console given here so we can check uh, this is a great debugging tool we can enter small scripts and uh, we can also monitor different variables okay, so like normal jupyter notebooks there are two modes here we can switch between the command mode and the editor mode with a single keystroke here i will show you when when you press escape on any cell you can enter the command mode for example here on escape so the blue line on the left of the cell indicates that this is the command mode where we can work with a lot of shortcuts for example we can enter the editing mode by pressing enter so if i press enter i can enter the editing mode here also if i want to add a cell above this i just need to press a and if i want to cut this cell i just need to press x so similarly there are a lot of commands here we can run the cell and select below which shift plus enter and also navigate our uh, cells with arrow keys or j and k keys similarly uh, when we enter the editing mode there are a lot of shortcuts where we can indent undo redo run cells and do a lot more okay so what i like about intellij based ides is the smart coding assistance so when let me show you how this works in case we miss out on a module we can use the shortcut control plus space to get all the available options and choose the correct module and complete our code for example here if i forgot the particular module starts with uh, which starts with m so i can use the control plus space uh, code completion to get all the options so i wanted module selection similarly in case of error checking it provides on the fly error checking and quick fixes easy navigation and much more so we can also navigate to each and every variable that i have defined in this particular project for example or these are all my variables i can go to each and every one of them and monitor them and previously i already discussed about local and remote notebooks you can either work with a local notebook server which is created by data spell itself or i can uh, connect to a remote notebook in in case i want to connect to a remote notebook i just need the url which contains the token all right the token is really important in that case okay now let's talk about the interactive python scripts so we have a scientific we are given a scientific python console in this console we can run some scripts and expression to see the outputs and state of variables also we can use it for a little bit of debugging now in case of cells in python scripts we can split code cells with separators and run them individually like jupyter notebooks and let me show you so if i go here in a cell dividers so i have separated the import statement and the variable declarations with this symbol also in case of data and visualization outputs we can browse data frames and visualizations right in place with interactive controls as i was able to show you by right clicking on that it supports a number of python scientific libraries like like plotty skippy bokeh and many others so i made a visualization project where i was able to make a lot of visualizations i made a scatter plot here and i made a what is this a bar plot right similarly i was able to make a factor plot a line plot scatter plots and a lot of different plots so as you can see here it supports a lot of visualization tools and libraries now uh, when it comes to built in tools we get all the git functionalities like version control we can easily clone git projects so with the help of this we can commit push update a project or 
any number of commands we can also work with different branches and we can also stage updates before we commit them now the terminal the terminal here works just like the command prompt in which we can do a number of things like we can create a directory for example let me create a directory with the terminal here so if i want to make a directory by the name of public i can do that and i made a public directory here okay so i made a public directory it will reflect here in a while okay so let's move on to database tools okay so the we can access and query the database right from the IDE. We can connect to a number of data sources as shown here. We can connect to a number of data sources. It provides full support and connectivity for many database and big data and data warehousing tools. It relies on smart coding assistance. So you get a helping hand when uh, you edit SQL code or run queries or alter schemas. Okay, let's talk about all the features in data spell so we already have a lot of support for python from intelligent code completion to on the fly error checking and quick fixes and like other intellij based ides it provides easy navigation next is our markdown so data spell supports editing and rendering markdown in both net notebook cells and in separate files so markdown supports the insertion of a lot of different type of text so, uh, text and data such as header text, ordered lists, bullet lists, bold and italic text, hyperlinks, even images and tables. So data spell fully supports interactivity for both starting and JavaScript based outputs used by scientific libraries such as Plotty, Bokeh, which I have discussed. So I have made a few visualizations here in my project, as you can see. So I can interact with these and it seems that the quality of this images is really good plus the project runs smooth no matter the scope of the project also for, for data frames data spells offer offers rich interactive table controls all right now let's see our debugging so the debugger is supported in both jupyter notebook and python scripts so you can set up breakpoints so in my code here i have set up a breakpoint here so if i press on the debugging cell button i can go here and we are provided with the normal options like step overs and step into's and we can also view our variables like yfred we can view this variable as an array or series or any other type of data structure that it can support also we can add an uh, expression here we can add an expression in this it has the ability to evaluate any expression and we can add that add that as a watch so i already put vibrate here went to vibrate and i added this here as a watch right so i can add that as a watch so when it comes to sql we can connect to your database and we can explode tables perform refactorings import and export data and much more on the topic of refactoring uh, with the help of refactoring we can move our directory and or copy our directory to somewhere else we can also rename our project and our uh, directory names with the help of refactoring so that is a handy tool uh, when it comes to now let's talk about r so for r there is some basic supports like a debugger data set and visualization explorer package manager and intelligent coding assistance so r is also a big player when it comes to data science so they have given some basic support for it their main focus is on python but r is also getting some love so uh, we can get the setup of r we can if you already have r installed in your system we can just go to the setup here so we can just go to the setup here and if you don't have then you can download it from this link right okay next is our plugins so there are a lot of options available through the universe of plugins and uh, you know intellij based ides so the plugin support here is healthy and you can get a lot of plugins for example you can get the let me go to the plugins part okay so in settings i get all these options i can get big data tools and applications like i can connect to hadoop 
or AWS or Azure, or I can use Docker, which is basically a containerization tool. We can get Git tools. Also, we have a lot of options when it comes to themes or for plugins. So if you need some kind of support from the outside, then plugins is a very good option. Next is our scratch files and scratch buffers. So uh, scratch files and buffers are basically temporary files. These are scratch files are fully functional and also they are debuggable files. So they are useful for drafting up code. You can write some a few drafts of code uh, or running quick code in isolation. So these are good for debugging. Alternatively, scratch buffer are just plain text. They are useful uh, for making quick notes, a to-do list or frequently used strings. Okay, so I can create a scratch file by going here, new scratch file. I can create a scratch file and it is fully functional. Thank you so much for watching. So this was a quick overview or a starting guide for data spell if you like this video leave a comment like or subscribe thank you so much for watching